my name is Dr. Anne Parkinson. I'm a senior lecturer in physiology at the University of the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. I've been teaching cell biology and physiology for over 20 years. I'm a long-term user of Campbell's Biology, been using it probably for over those 20 years. Um, and we've also been using Mastering Biology as a supplement in our course as well. I'm also a co-author of the 12th edition of Campbell's Biology, the Australian New Zealand version. Um, so that was quite exciting to be invited to be, become part of that team in um, 2020, 2021. Um, as a long time user of Campbell's Biology, I've, I've loved the product for so many years. So it was quite exciting to actually be involved in the authoring team um, for this new edition. So one of the, the new features in the new version of Campbell's Biology that I really like is in addition to the key concepts in that um, front page, that opening page of each chapter, they have the study tips and the study tips are usually around drawing. I use visualization and drawing in my lectures all the time to, tell, to teach students. So I'm constantly drawing away. And when we've moved to these asynchronous lectures, the first thing I did was like, okay, how can I draw in my lectures? What do I need? What materials, what sort of um, equipment do I need? So to see this come up in these new versions of these chapters was so exciting for me that I can now direct the students to, to the textbook and actually get them to draw these animal cells or plant cells and build their knowledge, these visualizations of their knowledge of these cells and how they, their structure relates to their function. The other good thing on that landing page as well, that opening page of the chapter, is it has some uh, links to go to Mastering Biology. So under the study tip, there's a go to Mastering Biology page and it has information for the students to go and look at the e-text. Another great benefit in Mastering Biology is the version of the e-text. So instead of lugging around, you know, two, three, four kilo <laughs> textbook in and out of classes, which some of our students were doing in the past in their backpacks, they can then bring their device, their iPad, their tablet, their laptop, and quickly bring up the textbook, the e-text from Mastering Biology in the tutorial class as we're discussing some of these concepts around the cells and their structure and the function. They have links to the, those Bioflix videos um, and the other study areas that they can see, although there's these walkthroughs of some of these concepts as well, which link to some of the images in the text. For instructors, we can also use that to assign some additional those challenge materials to further our students' knowledge and understanding of some of the concepts in cell biology. Cell biology, our first year course, um, it's around about 450 students currently. It's been up to about 600 students in the past as well. About two thirds of our students are under the age of 20. So they're quite young, probably school leavers. About two thirds are, tend to be female. Uh, two thirds are in their first semester at university. And the university's actual demographic, about half of our students are in their first in their family to actually go to university. So it's really important that we foster their learning, um, support their learning. So some of them come in without any background in science and in biology. So we need to have some resources that are available to these students to enable them to learn and move on in their programs. So the different programs that we teach um, in this course include science, uh, biomedical science, including uh, pre-med. So we have medical science students who are then going on to a postgraduate medicine degree. Uh, we cater for an associate degree of medical science. So they're going to become our lab technicians. And we even uh, cater to animal ecology. So it's a quite a diverse cohort of students who are uh, trying to learn about how cells are important their understanding of their particular um, programs. So I first started using mastering in an informal sense. So we don't use it um, formally for assessment, but we use it in an informal as an informal supplement. First started using it a few years ago and I was one of, one of the Pearson representatives. Actually, um, they were talking about the textbook in the latest edition and they introduced us to the mastering side. And seeing how it could just seamlessly integrate into the learning management system. So at the time we were using Blackboard, it was just so easy for the students to then, um, we, we had mastering just in the site and they could click into it and go straight into using the study resources. The other thing that was beneficial was that 
the Pearson representative would actually come to our first lecture and they would show the students how to actually use mastering. So how to access it using the code and then getting into the site and what the resources were there available to them. Equally so, you know, the representatives also show us how to um, use the mastering from an instructor side. So what we can get out of it. So, you know, assigning videos to watch or making um, quizzes, so selecting questions out of the test banks and things like that. Okay, so having a, a diverse group of students with a wide range of previous study experiences means we have students who want to further challenge beyond the course materials. So for instance, when we introduced the medical science students to the program, the course um, a few years ago, so these are students who are going to go on to do medicine. So they're quite high achieving students and we find that they would like to have further challenges. So what we can do is they finish the course materials each week and then we can set them um, challenges from the questions and the, the resources that are also available at the end of each chapter in the textbook and additionally in mastering. So that can actually feed those challenges for those students. So they're not just sitting around going, oh, I've done that, it was all easy for me. So some of the key challenges in learning about cell biology include the sheer volume of content that we have to get through. So it can overwhelm some of our students in um, how much they have to actually learn, especially in that first semester of their study. So um, we can use some of the resources in mastering biology, such as those Bioflix videos and the other animations to actually help the students understand these concepts. So rather than just relying on a static picture in the textbook, which are fabulous by the way, because they, um, they link in with the text and help the students explain these concepts, they can go further and into the mastering um, course site and actually look at some of these videos to visualize some of these concepts. So the Bioflix videos especially, they're almost like a 3D um, type of video. They're not exactly 3D, you don't have to wear 3D glasses or have any special uh, TV screens or anything, but they help the students actually visualize some of these concepts. This has actually inspired myself and some colleagues. So a few years ago, we were lucky enough at our university to score a what's called a cave two. This is a 3D immersive visualization studio. And I'd been watching these Bioflix videos in mastering for many, many years and thought, oh, I'd really like to do something like that for our students. So when this Cave 2 visualization center was built at our campus, we got in there and one of my colleagues, she actually coded this video on the cell and how water moves through aquaporins. So we get the students in the studio, they actually visualize water molecules moving into and out of the cell. Obviously, we can't do that for every concept because, you know, we just don't have the time and the space in the curriculum to bring the students into and out of the cave or to code it. But we can then direct those students back to the Bioflix videos in the mastering site, and they can get just as much out of those video resources as our cave to visualization. So it really helps in their understanding of some of these quite abstract concepts of how things in these tiny, tiny little cells which they can't even see with the naked eye. How do they actually move into and out of cells, which are important for, you know, like um, hydration status of a cell. Think of, um, you know, why is, why is celery go limp? You know, why um, is it crunchy? Because of the amount of water that's moving into cells. So that's quite a lot of content involved in um, covering that material. So a few years ago, what we decided to do was chunk our lectures into these concepts. And we're lucky enough that Campbell's Biology actually also chunks their chapters. So they actually have these uh, concepts at the start of each chapter. And we're able to link in with those concepts and uh, align them with our lectures. So we don't use every particular concept in every chapter, but we're able to pick out the, the main concepts and flag it to the students on what they were meant to be learning and then what they could use in the Campbell's Biology, the textbook to read. So these key concepts are a really good way to actually structure your lectures to allow the students to understand what they need to get out of the material, what's important and what they maybe can just read for the fun of it. Um, the other good thing is that in Mastering Biology, which we use as a supplement to the learning in the textbook, they are 
those concepts are also flagged. So they may be flagged in video resources like the Bioflix videos, or um, if they want to test themselves by using some formative quiz material in the mastering site. A delivery of the course has been evolving over the last few years. So we've, we've gone from what's been a strictly face-to-face -face course where we've had in-class uh, lectures every week, two hours of lectures, um, alternating tutorial classes and laboratory classes and moving now to asynchronous um, videos to, to um, go over those concepts, those key concepts in cell biology. So by using the textbook and mastering, we can use some of the resources that are available to us as instructors um, to aid the learning. So it's not just us, you know, with some static pictures um, on slides talking to them. We can then direct the students to watch um, a fabulous Bioflix video. So for instance, when we do the first um, topic on the cell, they can actually go in and watch a video on the cell components. Um, the cell membrane, really important um, concept to get across how things move across into and out of cells. There's some great videos um, in the mastering side that shows ions and other molecules like glucose and how they actually go across that membrane um, into and out of the cell. So we're currently transitioning to a new learning management system. We're going from Blackboard to Canvas in 2022. So we're preparing our courses for the delivery, plus in addition to the changes in the delivery mode, going to asynchronous videos and lectures and you no know, face-to-face lectures for 2022 moving forward. So this is an opportunity to refresh and revive our use of mastering biology. So we can look at what's available in the mastering um, package and see how we can integrate it easily into the new Canvas site. So I see this as a really exciting opportunity to actually see what's available in the, especially in those videos and the other study resources that are available for the students so they can be encouraged to, to learn beyond what is actually given to them into the classes. So that will challenge them into the future, I think, as well. Um, that's also exciting for us as instructors to see what we can access from using the textbook Campbell's Biology and moving into the mastering site as well. If you're interested in getting Mastering Biology and using it in your course, the first thing I would do is talk to a representative, your Pearson representative, and get them to show you the site and what is available in the Mastering site. So have a good look at the e-text, how to access that, how to access the, the videos and the study area, how to actually access the, um, the quizzes. So there's some quizzes in there that you can actually set the students as a challenge. And depending on how well they go through the quiz, they may get further through those, um, those formative quizzes as, as well. Um, another thing is that I would get the representative to either come and talk to your students on how they can use the mastering course. So they could either do that in person, but if you're like us moving to more asynchronous um, online lectures, ask the representatives, can they make a video to actually show the students and step them through the mastering site? I fear that sometimes our, our students buy the text and they don't actually use all those resources that are available in mastering. So they might get to the end of the semester and go, oh, I could have used that video way back in week one to actually help me understand how that cell works. So, you know, we want to encourage the students from the get go at the start of the semester, what resources they can use to help them in their learning of the course material. <laughs> 